Hello and welcome to Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Join us now as we enter our weekly Sunday service with praise and worship along with practical teachings from God's Word. And now here's the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church Mass Choir. Verses 8 down through and in 
exclusive of verse 11. Right. Revelation chapter 2, uh, and the verses are 2, or 8 through 11. Yeah. You'll find these words, And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, saith the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. Yes. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, yes. and I know the blasphemy mm -hmm. of them which say they are Jews, yes. and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Mm -hmm. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, mm -hmm. that ye may be tried, mm -hmm. and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Mm -hmm. Be thou faithful unto death. Yes. Yes. Thou give thee a crown of life. Yes. Okay. He that hath an ear, yes. let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. This is the word of God for the people of God. All praises be unto God. For a few moments I want to highlight that 11th verse and for a few moments I want to um, invest attention uh, in this passage. Verse 11 reads, He that hath an ear, mm -hmm. let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Yes. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. I want to use for a thought for a few moments, my brothers and sisters, things every church needs to know. Things every church needs to know. By the time of this text, the church had suffered a decline from the early days of Paul and her explosion in the book of Acts where the Bible says the church was birthed and when Peter preached 3,000 souls came uh, desiring as old folk would say uh, asking the question what must I do to be saved the church had suffered decline and, and by this time uh, there were concerns with the seven churches of Asia Minor uh, that the Bible speaks of and uh, Ephesus is perhaps one of the most criticized churches because uh, the Bible says the church at Ephesus had left her first love. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, not only uh, was that church criticized but uh, also amongst the worst offenders uh, was the church uh, at Sardis because uh, it's, it's interesting that the Bible says Sardis was completely dead. Yeah. It's a shame that you leave your first love, but then when, when the love becomes so stale that it dies, yes, sir. it's an awful yes, thing. Yes, sir. Now, 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 it's interesting to note that uh, John, who wrote this particular passage of scripture, he, he writes uh, the book of Revelation with three purposes in mind. Uh -huh. Number one, uh, his first purpose was the immediate he writes with the immediate concern in mind. In other words, he's trying through scripture to explain exactly what's happening at that moment in time. Yes, uh, yes. The, there's an immediate issue that he seeks to write about and he seeks to try to give an understanding of the happenings uh, that were going on at that time. Uh -huh. The second reason that he wrote uh, the book of Revelation was, uh, some say, the historical purpose. Yeah. His historical purpose uh, was simply to uh, show how prophetically uh, the Bible uh, points to uh, the New Testament Jesus and how even the book of Daniel gave an understanding of what would eventually happen in the yes, book of Revelation. Yes, yes. It was an historical approach. But then thirdly and finally, he writes the book of Revelation uh, with what is called the godly purpose in mind. The godly purpose or the revelation uh, is the unveiling of the person of Christ. When John uh, picks up a pen and put pen to paper, he's simply trying to 
ultimately let you know that Jesus is the revelation of who God is. Oh, yes. And ultimately, he unveils and uncovers the person of Christ, and that is God's church. Yes. Uh, at the end of the day, the bottom line that he's trying to articulate, get this, uh, is that the church, who is God's bride, has got to get right. One more song, I picked up pig, put it in the paper, and wrote the song, Get My Church, and let's go home. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Now, now, watch this, watch this, because of all of the seven churches that John addresses, only the church in the text, Smyrna, mm -hmm. it, it seems to have it right. Yes, sir. All of the other six churches, of Asia Minor had some faults and some yes. problems, but Smyrna seems to have it right. Get this. Smyrna shows us at least three things that every church needs to know. Here it is. Here it is. First of all, Smyrna shows us to live up to her surname. To live up to her surname. The church has got to live up to her surname. Here it is. What are you talking about? Uh, the etymology of the name Smyrna uh -huh. literally means bitter. Wow. Bitter. Okay. And interestingly enough, one of the chief products that were uh, was manufactured in Smyrna was myrrh. Yeah. And myrrh was that bitter gum-like substance. It was a resin that was made from the shrubs that were found in Smyrna. The city of Smyrna ultimately almost became synonymous with myrrh. And so listen, what God is trying to tell his church is that if you're going to represent him, you've got to live up to your name. The church is called the Ecclesia. What is the Ecclesia? I'm glad you asked out there who are looking right now. But the question is... What is the Ecclesia? Yes, the Ecclesia is the called out. Yes, those who have been set apart. Those who have been distinguished. Those who have been called out. Do this for such a time as this. If the world ever needed to see what a saint of God looks like. It's, it's right now that the world needs to know what it means to be a child of God in these perilous times. What does the church look like? Yeah. Who does the church act like? Come on, somebody. Yeah. I heard one preacher say, come on, somebody. That the church has to act like uh, their father. Come on. Yeah. I heard my preacher, Ronnie Mitchell, say the church got to act like his father. Yeah. Yes, and the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, in times like these, uh -huh. where the world is hungry yeah. for a living yeah. word, yeah. Jesus gave the key. He says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. God wants to use his church in this season to, to draw people to him because people are scratching their head wanting to know what in the world is going on. The church got to live up to her name. You walk around and call yourself a saint when you're acting like an ain't. Come on, somebody. church has to live up to her surname. Um, I don't care if, if you a Baptist or a Pentecostal. Come on somebody. I don't care if you're Church of God in Christ or Church of God. The good news is I'm a Baptist Christian. A Pentecostal Christian. A Presbyterian Christian. My surname is Christian and that means I ought to act Christ like. Come on somebody. You may speak up and I don't come on somebody. You may lay hands and speak in tongues, but it ain't about this thing right now. It's about is your name Christian? Yes. Are you Christ like? Yes. The church has to live up to her surname. Yes, sir. Not only does God want the church to know that she's got to live up to her surname, God wants the church to listen uh, or rather line up. Get this, lined up with the leadership of her shepherd. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Live up to her surname. Yeah. But now is the time when we got to line up <laughs> with the leadership of the shepherd. Yeah. Note something, note something. 
of all of the letters that went out to the seven churches of Asia Minor, uh -huh. get this, all of them were addressed to the angel of the church uh, of Smyrna. Yeah. To the angel of the church at Ephesus. To the angel of the church at Philadelphia. To the angel of the church at Laodicea. The God's clear instruction came through the angel or angelos in the original Greek, which is a messenger. If God wants to send a message to his church, guess what? He's going to use the angel of the church. Are y'all listening to me? The angel of the church, the pastor is God's messenger to his church. And if God has a message for his church, listen, you can't look for him uh, from the pew. You got to look for him from the pulpit because every time God wants to preach and speak to his church, he uses his pulpit and his preacher to the angel of the church, the messenger. Yeah. You don't believe me? I see you looking at me in radio land. I see you looking at me in TV land. Watch this. Get this. Get this. The pastor, historically, is God's mouthpiece. Uh -huh. All right. Talk to us. Yes, His mouthpiece. Uh, you, you don't believe me? Jeremiah, yeah. chapter 3, uh -huh. verse 15 says, And I will give you pastors yeah. according to my own heart. That will lead you, will, will feed you with knowledge and understanding. In the book of Isaiah, the twenty-first chapter, the Bible uh, claims uh, that the, the the preacher or the, the, the pastor is the watchman, and the question is, watchman, what up the night? And I heard some preachers say just last week, come on, that God does His best work at night. Come on, somebody, the night time is. Right time. Come on, come on. In Ephesians chapter 4, just so you don't think it's Old Testament, in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says, and I will give you apostles. And he gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists. He gave some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. When God has a message for his church, come on somebody, he uses the messenger or the pastor. Get this, get this, get this, get this. The text says, to the angel of the church at Smyrna. Uh -huh. To the angel of the church at Sardis. Yeah. To the angel of the church. Yeah. Get this, her angel is singular. That's right. And not plural. Come on, somebody. Right. Uh, but the problem uh, with so many of us, especially in times like these, yeah. where we can dial up a, a church and watch it from the confines of our own uh, living room, uh, is that uh, many of us will take the message God gave to one church and try to apply it to the church you go to. Listen, don't try to tell me what they do across town as though that's the only message in the land where God speaks to fellowship. He'll speak it through Kevin Stafford. When God speaks to the church across the town, uh, he'll speak it to the angel at that house. And there ain't but one message to each church. And any time there is more than one vision, it creates division. Come on, preacher. Use it, Lord. That's good. The Lord says to his church, to live up to your surname, to line up with the leadership of the shepherd. But then last and I'm done. He says uh, to his church in this, this, this awesome season, uh, uh -huh. he says that the church needs to, needs to know not only to live up to a certain name, uh -huh. not only to line up with the leadership uh, of the shepherd, uh -huh. but to labor faithfully in her service. All right. Every church, yeah. especially in times like these, has got to know that God is looking for some laborers yeah. who will labor loyally and, and hang in there with the service that God in fact has given you. Get this, labor faithfully in your loyal service. Verse 9, verse 9. The Lord says in verse 9, I know thy works. Hmm. 
I, I know your works. I, I know your works. The word, the word works in the original Greek, Edo, it literally means to see with the eyes and discern. Yeah. To see with the eyes and discern. Yeah. So God says, listen, I see with my eyes your works. And I can discern why you're working the way you're working and what it's all about. In other words, this is a season where I'm seeing those who are real, come on somebody, versus those who just want some accolades, come on somebody. Those who are going to work when the day is done, and those who are going to give up when the time uh, is difficult to work. Those who will work when the church is full of people, versus those who will work in the hands of us, and we're in front of a camera. I know your work. To stick your head in the sand. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time where you turn a deaf ear to the needs of the people. I got to preach because I have an irresistible earth to preach. Even if I got to preach to a camera, I'm going to give it all I got because God gave me all He had. Oh, hell. He says, He says, I know your work. I know your work. He says, I see with my eyes. I discern with my spirit. You, you can't fool God in a season like this. Come on, somebody. There's some folk that because they can't come to church, they won't have church. But the good news is you ain't got to show up to fellowship to have some fellowship with God in your own home. I know your works. You can discern while you're doing what you're doing. Get this, get this. He says, he says, verse 10, fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Hmm. Don't be afraid of anything that's happening even in a season like this. Fear none of these things that you shall suffer. Fear, phobia, in the original Greek, uh -huh. it, it means to be afraid of a, a certain circumstance or surrounding. Yeah. To, to be in fear of. Uh, and can I submit to you, can I suggest to you uh, that in verse 9, he says, uh, I know your works. Uh -huh. uh, and in verse 10, he says, uh, don't be afraid of the devil's works. Right. Yes, right. I see your works. Yeah. And I know the devil's trying to work counter to what you're trying to do. And the devil wants to do his best to make you afraid of the work you've been doing. But he says, listen, don't be afraid of the devil. No, be faithful to me because fear and faith can never peacefully coexist. As a matter of fact, I heard the word of God saying that he's not giving us <laughs> the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. He, he says, uh, verse 10, the B clause. Be thou uh, faithful uh, unto death. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we can't skip over that. Right. He says, I don't want you to be in fear of what uh, you have to suffer in this season. Right. And, and I want you to understand uh, that it may get so bad uh, yeah. that you may be threatened by the possibility of death. Yes. But he said, uh, be thou faithful unto death. In other words, don't you even fear death. Because the good news is that because of what Jesus did on hell, uh, the sting of death has been taken away. Oh, death, what is your sting? Where is your victory? The good news is the sting of death has been swallowed up in victory. And the good news is if I labor with Jesus because he died and he rose again, I will rise again. I got some good news. I'm going to be faithful unto death because the good news is that my God the devil held him. They hung him high and they stretched him wide and 
for everything. And there ought to be some good news for those who are tuning in right now. He got power over everything. Power over everything. Power over promoters. Yes. Power over everything. Power over everything. Power over everything. The people of God, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. But the people of God, we're living in those perilous times that Paul talked about. And the good news for all of us uh, as we look at this text, and I'm through when I tell you, every church needs to know that we got victory. Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. Through Jesus the Christ. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Be faithful. Mm. Not fearful. Yeah. Don't take anything else with you. Yeah. From these few moments that we've shared. Be faithful. Yes. Uh, not fearful. That's good. Yeah. Be faithful. Yeah. Not fearful. Yes. If you can if you can trust God um, to die on the cross. Uh. And yeah. trust God to rise again. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing we as a people, yeah. nothing we as a country, yeah. nothing we as a world cannot rise above. Yeah. We're just going to hold on. we just got to hold on. We've got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. One songwriter says, time is filled with swift transition. Yeah. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes <laughs> on things eternal. Yes. Hold. Hold, Hold. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Yes. God bless you. God keep you. And listen, if you don't know Christ Jesus in the parting of your sins, if you've never accepted my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, listen, the beauty of of the invitation that Christ extended on Calvary 2,000 plus years ago. When he says, come unto me, all you that labor, head of labor, I'll give you rest. That, that invitation is still available to you. Yeah. You don't have to be at a church in a physical form. Yeah. You don't have to walk down the aisle of any given church to accept Christ Jesus. Right. right in the confines of wherever you're viewing from. Yeah. Right there, sitting on your couch. Or right there, sitting in your living room. Yeah. You can open your heart wow. and accept Jesus in accordance with this word. Mm. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth yeah. and believe yeah. in your heart the Lord Jesus and the God has raised him from the dead, Hallelujah. you shall be saved. That's right. Salvation is just that simple. Yes. And the beauty of it is, it's free. That's right. And in times like these, <laughs> you need a Savior. Yes. I dare you to trust in my God. I dare you to trust in my Jesus. Yes. For I've learned to trust in, in Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God through it all. Yes. Through it all. Yes. I've learned yes. I lean and to depend on this word. God bless you and God keep you. That's our prayer.